My presentation is the literacy across the content area presentation for week one. Um, what I gathered from all the information that I read from the week and a few articles that I, I kind of really found on my own um, through some research I and, and, and enjoyed and actually put them in my toolbox. This is what my understanding is um, what a literacy across content means. Um, across content literacy means using English language art content to teach all content areas, such as math, science, social studies, physical education, music, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, The main goal is to engage and support student learning to communicate and utilize advanced literacy skills to equip students with the skills they need to live, work, and run at ho a home successfully in the 21st century. Um, and what they do is they acquire the content knowledge by using literacy and using strategies that use literacy in the learning. Um, but it also gears towards getting them ready for the 20, 21st century skills that they're gonna need because this is in history, recorded history, they are gonna, people need to do more reading, more writing. Um, it's required um, to be successful than any other century. Um, and so that is what my understanding of uh, across the content, literacy across the contents. And so some benefits of content literacy, um, it's gonna improve communication. What I mean by communication, it's gonna, when we use literacy, when we use the reading, when we use writing, when we use spoken, the spoken word or speaking and listening, all those forms are how we communicate. And so when we take that into our content, um, it, it even improves how we do understand, how we take in the content, new content we are learning, but it also gives us practice on how to communicate. Um, and I'll go further on that in another slide. Um, obtain advanced literacy skills. Not only are students able to learn the content, but they're getting practice with literacy. So they will be able to have that advanced learning that they're going to need to have when they um, leave and go to the workforce for the 21st century. Um, and they develop a deeper understanding of content. Um, I taught sixth grade history and science. And I did it kind of the unconventional way. I've never had any formal, I hadn't had any formal teaching. I just had a four year degree and I worked in, a, I worked for a private school. And so I had no idea, all I knew was the content. I had no idea the impact of using writing and reading and listening and speaking, the literacy skills at ELA, how important that was um, to de develop a deeper understanding of content for my students. For instance, I used a strategy that allowed them to, it was a writing strategy uh, to compare a uh, World War I and World War II. After they were able, after they did that, they came away and I did a, a formative assessment and they had a deeper understanding. And some of the, the conversation that they, the class conversation, I, I was really surprised how that one strategy um, sparked the discussion and how how each student was able to, um, the first one, communicate and how much they actually understood. And they did have a deeper understanding and was able to see, just recall the background knowledge of World War I when they were looking at World War II. So that was pretty cool. Um, developing critical thinking skills. Absolutely. Um, we got, they have the reading, writing, and the ELA again. All those, reading, writing, speaking, you, you're thinking, it helps you develop critical thinking skills, especially um, when your teachers are modeling how to think. I'm gonna think out loud. And then student engagement. Um, I found an article in Utopia that 
it talked about, it gave examples of how to use speaking, um, writing, and some reading strategies. But uh, the speaking, they say chunk and chew, and this is so true. When you're giving students information, you have to have them give them time to process it. And, you know, in different learners, and if you have to make accommodations for students or um, even ELL learners or um, special needs, um, they need that extra time to process before they say anything. So the chunk and chew strategy is great with um, engaging learners. I think, um, think pair shares. I use a not at the beginning of my teaching, but towards the last year or so, I've been using a lot of pair share. And what it also do, does is I, it helps them to use academic language. And I really, um, I, it, and it also engages great class discussion with think pair share. Um, and I also can, like I said before, I can use it as informative. I can see what they know, uh, maybe, and quickly think if I have to reteach something. Um, writing, graffiti conversation. I've used group graffiti and when we were learning about the American uh, great, great West. Or, and so each person brought a writing component to the group graffiti. We talked about it first, we talked about the history of graffiti, um, but then they were able to write a little piece and they each picked something um, about the, Ameri the great American West. <laughs> it's just not, okay. And then reading, pre um, previewing a text. There's several texts that I, um, previewed in my class historical fiction. Um, I wasn't able to really assign a book, but I gave a few books that um, my students were able to look at and preview and model to think aloud. And I didn't put it on there, but read alouds are great in any content area. You can bring a reader aloud. I, for my second grade, I even had um, second grade observations, I have a great math book that talks about subtraction. Um, and there's so many ways to introduce a read aloud as well. And then student learning. So when we're, student learning across content literacy, it allows for um, differentiation while learning the subject content. And I want to, it's individualized because I and one of the articles I read, it talked about doing a jigsaw. And it talked about like if a student is struggling with decoding, that you could gear um, gear a lesson with decoding, but pair it with the subject. Or um, visualizing not being able to understand what they're seeing. There, you can also gauge that into the content. Um, and then you get, you get uh, students get exposed to several print, printed and electronic resources. And what was great about this was um, towards the end of this year, I took my social studies content class and I was able to expose my students to several different platforms. We did um, Time for Kids and National Geographic plus our curriculum and then there were some other, I think it was National Pen Pals, there were some other platforms there that I was able to engage my students with. And what I have one text and there's not a lot of supplements and it had great um, resources to bring extra supplements because you do need the supplement supplement, but you have to be very careful is what I found on making sure that it matches your learners in your classroom. Um, I had a lot of visual and social learners and some of the products really didn't match up with their learning styles. Um, lessons that provide rich supplemented material and activities, I think I just said that. Um, students are given the opportunity to become experts in the content area. And this is my biggest takeaway from um, last week is that article I found on jigsawing. I misunderstood how to do jigsaw and I did it a little bit, but 
um, and then I was able to watch a video on it. And it shows how each, they took a group of students and they assigned them to one group. And then they gave them each different categories and they, it had to do with planting. Somebody had herbs, somebody had vegetables. Um, and then they, re, they went ahead and then they put them in groups with the students that had herbs and the ones that had vegetables. And then they had several different resources between them and they just researched. And then eventually they came back to their group and they were sharing what they knew with the people in their group and each person had the opportunity. But what it was nice, what was nice is this teacher was able to go and have some individual time with each student. And when the video started, the child, the student mispronounced herbs and called them herbs. And she was able to see that and correct that. And so that's also a nice way to allow students and teachers to get that kind of one-on-one -on -one time with jigsaw and workshops like that. And I am excited to use that technique in my classroom. And that was my biggest takeaway from con Montanic <laughs> a long night. And also my references. Literacy across the content.